Welcome to New Salem's virtual worship experience. Please keep watching after the sermon to hear important information and updates. Good morning, New Salem. I'm Elizabeth Cochran, Chairman of the Deacons Board. Today's scriptures come from Psalms 8, 1 through 9. O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength. Silence your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. The flocks and the herds and all the wild animals and the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean current. O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fill the earth. Shall we go to the throne of grace? This morning, I would like to read your a prayer of protection. It was written by James Freeman during World War II, but it so applies to today. I will take liberties and change one thing. I will change the word from me to you. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. The mind of God guides you. The life of God flows through you. The laws of God direct you. The power of God abides within you. The joy of God uplifts you. The strength of God renews you. The beauty of God inspires you. Wherever I am, God is. So today, I would just like to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you have done, and all the protection that you had afforded us. Lord, you give us new mercies every day. And Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you. Next week, as we go about our daily lives, Lord, I pray today that you will shut down hatefulness. Father, that you will shut down discord. Father, that you would shut down selfishness. Oh, Holy Father, that you would shut down the pandemic. And Father, I know that anything that you close, Father, anything that you shut down, Father, man cannot open it. Conversely, Father, I realize that anything that you open, man cannot close. Therefore, Holy Father, this morning, I would like to say open, open, Father, open peace, Father, on this earth, Father, Open, Father, financial gain on this earth, Father. Open, Father, child care for people, Father, so they can get back to their jobs, Father. Open mental health on people, Father, because right now, Lord, a lot of people are going through a lot of things right now, Father. There's a lot of people who's stuck in their house right now, who's feeling the, 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 the feeling what is going on this earth. Father, I pray for peace and homes, Father, because we realize with, the, with what's going in on in the house, Father, there's a lot of trauma going on. And Father, I pray for protection then. Holy Father, I just pray this morning that you will continue to open these doors, Father. And Father, that I realize that the doors that you're opening, Father, once you open it, Father, no man can close it. So Holy Father, I just want to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all that you have done. Thank you, God, for all the protection that you have afforded us. Holy Father, I just thank you. Lord, I just thank you for all that you're doing, Father. And Father, if I had a thousand tongues, Lord, I could not thank you enough for the covering that you have afforded us. Holy Father, I just thank you, Father. Lord, I just thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for the doors that you have closed, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, because I know what doors that you closed, Father, that no man can open them up again, Father. Lord, I thank you for the doors that you're opening, Father. The doors 
doors for new business, Father, the doors on old business, Father, the financial covering on people, Father. Lord, I just thank you, Father. God, I thank you for being God all by yourself during these troubling times. Lord, I thank you. Lord, if we didn't have you, I don't know where we would be. So, Lord, I thank you, Father, from the bottom of my heart. And, Father, I pray that you will continue to cover this new Salem church, Father, as we go about the marketplace, Father. I pray that you will cover all the children, Father, out there in the marketplace. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I thank you in advance of what you're going to do, Father, because I know your word your word is like gold father lord i thank you father i thank you for all that you've done your word is better than gold father lord i just thank you father i thank you for being god all by yourself and holy father as long as you're on the cross father as long as you're on the throne father as long as you're covering us father everything is going to be okay so holy father it is in your name that i close and say again thank you father thank you amen and amen
worship you oh prince of peace that is what i
for every mountain you brought me over for every trial you've seen me through for every blessing hallelujah for this I give you praise for every mountain you brought me over for every trial you've seen Good morning, New Salem. Good morning, New Salem. This is the day that the Lord had made, and we have come to rejoice and be glad therein. I don't think you heard me that this is the day that the Lord had made. I don't care where you are right now. You can rejoice and be glad in it because God has given you another day to praise and worship him. I want to give honor and glory to God for this awesome opportunity and give him all the praise, honor, and glory. I would like to also thank my pastor for extending this opportunity, and we also send blessings to not only him, but his lovely wife, our congregation, our uh, believers, those that are near and far. We also would want to thank God for you who are virtually across this nation. And while we're talking to you virtually, send a shout out in the chat for your city, your state, your country to let us know where you're watching this particular broadcast. We also would like to thank and praise God for Papa and Mama Troy and ask God's blessings upon them, as well as my mother and sister in Louisiana and my family as a whole. Let us bow our heads and go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you once again for allowing us this awesome opportunity. God, we do not take it lightly, but God, we come before you humbly and God ask for your blessings. We ask God that you would stand in us. We ask God that you would pour out your anointing, not only upon my voice, but God also upon those that are listening. We pray God that your people would be fed. We pray, God, that your people would be challenged. We pray, God, that lives would be transformed. And God, if there's any that don't know you, God, that they will come to you asking God for repentance and that you would be the Lord and Savior of their lives. God, we give you glory and honor what is about to take place this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we thank God for this opportunity because this is not only a great day, but it is also Super Bowl Sunday. Not only is it Super Bowl Sunday, but it is the first Sunday in our Black History Month. But one thing I know about Super Bowl and the battle that will take place, in this battle, there will be two teams. But in this battle, at the end of the day, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. I know in this battle, there will be points scored. I know in this battle that some will be pushed around. But at the end of the day, a champion will be crowned. As we look at our text for today, our text is coming from a very, very familiar passage of scripture. The 27th Psalm, verses 1 through 5 and verses 13 and 14. I would like to read that in your hearing from the King James Version. This is a Psalm of David where David writes, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I want to behold the beauty of the Lord all the days of my life to, and to inquire of his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon the rock. As we go down to verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This morning, we would like to speak to you from a subject entitled, Hope in Times of Trouble. Hope in Times of Trouble. As I mentioned earlier, that here it is, it is the celebration of Black History Month. And as we look at what our people have endured from all across the years, and even now, it can be surmised in a poem written by Langston Hughes. The poem written by Langston Hughes is the poem entitled Mother to a Son that was written in 1922. It is ironic that how familiar that even though those words were written way back then, they are so evident now, and still yet it echoes to give us hope for a better day. The poem says, well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't beating on crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor bare. But all the time, I've been climbing and reaching landings and turning corners and something sometimes going on in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps cause you find it getting kinda hard. Don't you fall now, for I still gone on, honey, for I still be climbing and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. As we look at what is happening today, we should have still hope in the midst and in these times of trouble. As we look at what is happening across the world amidst the pandemic where numbers are rising in some places and falling in others. When we look at what is happening in our state of Ohio that was reported on Wednesday of this week, we have had since the beginning of the pandemic over 902,000 cases of the coronavirus. We've had over 11,000 deaths. We've had over 46,000 hospitalization. And yet there is still discrepancy for unequal access for the vaccine among African-Americans in Ohio. How ironic it is that African-Americans make up approximately 20 percent of the hospitalizations, but over 12 percent of the state debts with only less than 5 percent of African-Americans been uh, received the vaccine. We are in the midst of times of trouble when we look at economic uncertainty, where those that have been faithful to employers, those that have given their lives to the building up of, of companies, those that have been faithful to service and dedication, if they tell you and give you a pink slip that it's been nice knowing you even though you've dedicated your life to them. We're in the midst of a pandemic when we look at the governor even said that he is proposing a $1 billion state budget in order to get a one-time coronavirus relief program to help Ohio recover from the uh, aid by the federal government in this time of corona. When we look at what's happening, we have political and social unrest, not only in the U.S., but in other parts of the world. When we look at what's happening, we see that there is moral decay and the sanctity of life in debating whether this life matters or that life matters outside the womb, but then yet have no problem saying that life does not matter inside the womb. 
We are still debating whether or not which life matters, but then yet very little at times is said about the 25 million people that are in slavery, in sex slavery across this country. And yet there are many across the state, many across this nation are still not only having bills that are due, but bills that are past due. They are looking for our college expenses. How are students going to make it? How are they just going to see their ends look at each other, not even less meet? But yet, life has been no crystal stare. When we look and we agree that if weekly, if not daily, we hear of loved ones, whether on social media or phone calls, ones that have transitioned this life, never again to be seen on this side of eternity. Yes, life can become heavy. Yes, hardships will happen. Yes, during these times, our minds and our hearts may be tempted to be overwhelmed, may be tempted and be overwhelmed by everything that is happening. Despair and darkness may try to come creeping in. What am I to do? I didn't ask for this. Why is this happening? To whom can I turn? And is there any hope for today? If you have tuned into our broadcast, our pastor has led us through a series of messages about challenging us to get closer to God from Romans 12, 1 and 2. As we look at how David unfolds his situation here in the 27th Psalm, it gives us hope in the times of trouble. Let us look deeper into the word of God. David begins saying that the Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? The first verse tells us that David knew that he was part of the family of God. The question is, are you a part of God's family? Can you say at any point in time that you have made a definitive choice that I will give my life over to Christ and live for him? When David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Reveals three things to me. First, it reveals he had a relationship with God. Second, it reveals to me that David had ownership. He knew that God owned him. But then third, that tells me that David had fellowship with God, that he knew God's character. And this brings me to my first point of why we can have hope in God. The reason we can have hope is when I choose to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life, I can be confident that he will provide what I need, when I need it, and how much I need it. I think I need to say that one more time. When I choose to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life, I can be confident that God will provide what I need, when I need, and how much I need it. Look at what David did not say. He didn't say that life wouldn't be challenging, but rather we can all admit that life at times can be very difficult. Life at times can be very difficult and seem unfair. There are things in life that sometimes come at us so fast, so hard and long that we can sometimes be mentally tempted. I want to give in. We can be emotionally tempted that you just want to go through the motions. You can be physically tempted to say, I'm just tired. I'm sick and tired of being tired. Or you may just say, I just want to give up on fighting in this battle. But here's the big question. David not only said the Lord was his light and his salvation, but the question that we have to answer is, am I going to fixate on my trouble or am I going to fix my focus on the one, on the Savior, who can bring me out of this trouble? Am I going to fixate on my problems or am I going to fix my eyes and focus on trusting God? Fixating on your problems. He said David himself, that here it is, the wicked, the enemies, even his foes, they came upon him to do him no good. That doesn't mean that we should not acknowledge when those that tried to hurt us, when those that tried to harm us, when those that really did not mean us any good, you call the spade a spade. But even when the odds seem stacked against you, even when it seems that there is no way out, 
even when the issue you're dealing with seems unchangeable, when it seems that it's unfair, when it seems that those have been unkind, when it seems that those have been unethical, when you don't know what you're going to do, when it seems as though the enemy is going to have the upper hand, don't become fixated on the problem, but focus your eyes on trusting the promises of God. Well, look at what God said to his people in the Old Testament. We find in Jeremiah 29 and 11, here it is, God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Well, if we see that in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, Christ said this, the thief's purpose is to rob, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ said, I've come that you may have life and you may have life in its abundant measure. In the Old Testament, God told his people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, here it is in the New Testament. Christ said this, but if you seek first the kingdom of God and what is going to be right in his eyesight, that everything else that you worry about, he going to add unto you. Well, in the Old Testament, he gives one more uh, word of encouragement. He says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding, but if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. Well, in the New Testament, in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19, it says, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches for which he has given to us in Christ Jesus. Well, notice that David in this psalm has confidence in that he has hope because God is a light and God is salvation. Our God is a light in every situation that we face. In other words, our God is a deliverer. If you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph himself, God revealed to him the clear priorities of his life. But then yet while he had this dream and he shared it with his family, here Joseph's family hated on him. Yes, in life you're going to have some who are haters in your life. This is the world's attitude. The world may tell you that you're underprivileged. Your family is made up of shepherds and not of kings. The world may tell you and treat you like a victim rather than a ruler. The world may tell you that you're less than, but it is not what the world says, it is what God says. Because here where all they saw was a shepherd, God saw a ruler in Joseph. And even though Joseph's circumstances turned from bad to worse, that did not alter the hope he had in God and the plan that God had from his life. Well, that brings me to point number two. While the circumstances of my life may not seem like it's lining up with God's plan right now, I can hope in God because nothing on heaven, nothing on earth can compete with God's promises that he has made unto me. God's word will never fail. His word will never come back void. And God is always faithful. Jesus himself said heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will never pass away. We can have our hope in God. Well, if we look at what David also wrote, David wrote this to encourage us. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And someone had to ask the question, well, who is the king of glory? And David said, it's the Lord, strong and mighty in battle. The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. And here it is, we can lift up our heads no matter what the situation is today, because our Lord, who is mighty in battle, is fighting for us. Well, not only can we lean upon what David's life has said, not only can we lean upon the example of Joseph, But we can also lean upon the example and the experiences of a lady by the name of Sevilla D. Martin. Well, you may not know her, but you will know her writings and her song. 
This lady was married to a minister, and yet even though she was an evangelist, God used her as a songwriter. And even in the midst of her failing health, where she could not travel, she wrote to us about having a hope in God. Well, what am I talking about? She wrote these words, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eyes is on the sparrow and I know he watches over me. Well, not only did she write that to give us hope in God, but before she wrote that song, she wrote this song, be not dismayed whatever be tied, that God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Through days of toil, when heart does fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce, your path assail, God will take care of you. Beloved, we can have a hope in God because God will take care of his people. Well, the third thing that I come to a point is David came to a point of definitive desire. First, he made a decision. Then he looked at his definitive desire. David says in the fourth verse of that psalm, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. When you have a definitive desire, you got to check your GPS. Well, I'm not talking about your global positioning system. I'm talking about your God positioning system. Your God positioning system will tell you that if you are seeking after what is best, what God wants for you, then you should go for it. Don't worry about what the naysayers say that you should go for it. Don't worry about what obstacles in your way that you should go for it. Don't worry about how many nights you may have had to cry. You should still go for it because David, although he knew his priorities was clear, his heart was fixed and his mind was made up and he realized whatever has happened in my past is my past. I'm looking ahead to my future and I'm going to go for all that God has for me. Well, here it is. You can go for it and we can do like Paul. We can go for it for the priceless value of knowing and having an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, the apostle Paul says this. I want to be found in him. I want to be walking with him and listening to him. He said, brethren, I don't count myself to have made it. He said, but this one thing I do, I'm going to forget those things which are behind me and I'm going to reach forth to those things which are before. Then he says this, I'm going to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So in other words, don't tune out the noise, tune out the naysayers, but you decide in your heart and mind today, I'm going to go for all that God has in store for me. Well, that brings me to my fourth point that David makes in this psalm. He says in verse five, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up on a rock. Well, I don't think you may have gotten that one. The point number four is, it's all about the setup. It is all about the setup. God is allowing us, God is allowing you, God is allowing me at times in our lives when we don't understand everything that we're going, going through, that he's bringing us through something to get us to something. He's bringing us through something to get us to something. I remember when my kids were younger, uh, real little, that they would say, Daddy, put me on your shoulders. When you put someone on your shoulders, you get a higher vantage point. When God says he's setting you up, he's giving you a vantage point that you have never seen before. When he's hiding you, he's allowing other things to pass by you don't need to see. But then yet when he sets you up, he wants you to take notice of some things that you wouldn't have noticed before. Well, what am I saying? David learned this lesson as well. When God brought him through the valley, when God brought him through, he wrote it in the song. He said that here it is, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with all, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God brought him through the valley, even though the valley seemed terrible, I brought you through the valley to get you to the table. And that's, that's a shouting word right there. You may be going through something right now, but this valley is not your stopping place. Keep on going through till you get to the table that God has for you. And this brings me to point number five, my last point. David writes and gives us confidence to have hope in God. Even though God said that we would never, God did not say that we would not experience trouble, but God did promise to his people that he would always be with us. God promised that he would be with us no matter what we're going through. He told this to Israel, and we can learn the lesson from them, from Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. He says, but now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, don't be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Well, when we look, when Israel cried out to God, God moved his hand. And the question is, who are we crying to? Are you crying out to the Lord? And as this is our uh, African American History Month, we have to look at the history, the rich history of our ancestors. And the path in which we have traveled has been a stony one. And in our anthem, there's parts of it that says this, sing a song full of faith, that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun, till our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. But here's the part that really grabs me. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, Keep us forever in the path, we pray. Well, we have to look where we are right now. We have to examine our GPS. The last part of this anthem here tells really our story. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God and true to our native land. Well, beloved, I'm telling you that you can have hope because that David looks at the bottom of that psalm that he writes out of the depth of his experience. He says this. He didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't play with it. He told it just like it was. He said, I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That has to be our testimony. Yes, I get tired. Yes, I get weary. Yes, I get weak. And yes, there are times I am worn. But yet I still hope in God because I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord, not just in the sweet by and by, but I believe while I'm here in the land of the living, I will see the goodness of the Lord. But then he says this, it may not come when you want it. But if you wait on the Lord and be of good courage, he will strengthen your heart. And in case you didn't hear me, he said it again. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Well, as I come to a close, there is a man that many of us may be familiar with. His name was Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey was a noted radio personality who was famous for saying, uh, and here's the rest of the story. He will begin to captivate his audience by the words and the pictures that he painted across the radio. 
Well, David would have been the original Paul Harvey. Well, what do you mean by that? David didn't just stop with that psalm, but David in a later psalm in Psalms 37 to say for those that are still wrestling, those that are still doubting, those that are still hurting, those that are still struggling, and what am I going to have hope in? He says, take a look at my track record because you can look at the rest of my story. He says this in Psalms 37, verse 25. He says, once I was young, but now I'm old. I can hope in God because yet have I never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Well, beloved, today is your day of decision. The question is, where do you stand with God? Have you made Jesus your choice? God is saying to you right now, wherever you are, whether it's in the United States, Jamaica, India, Africa, wherever you are, if you're under the sound of my voice, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, today is your day. You can connect with us at our New Salem Baptist Church. You can say and bow your head and say, Jesus, I want to give my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. I've made a mess of things and I'm sorry. And God, I ask that you would fill me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the grave on the third day. And right now, I choose you as my Lord and Savior. Well, beloved, if you've made that decision, we are happy for you. If you desire that you want to connect with us, there are three ways that you can connect with us. The first, you may send a text to 614-568-4858. The second, you may send an email and let us know that you made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life or that you need us to pray for you in a certain area, you may send an email to nsprayerministry at newsalemcares.com. Or you can visit our church website, which is church.newsalemcares.org slash connect. Beloved, I pray that today you have hope in God because hope in God will never fail. He will never fail you. The amazing thing is, the Bible says as often as you do it, and maybe we may not all be together in the same building, but we can be together in celebrating the same sacrifice. Think about the fact that God loved you and me enough to die for us. He allowed his body to be bruised and battered. And then he allowed his blood to be shed on Calvary. Songwriter picks us and there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. So we want to give you time to get your elements. However that may be and however you may celebrate that. But we remember this morning, this day, that whatever you have, it represents the ultimate sacrifice him dying for you and dying for me. So in this moment, let us take the bread and eat it together as a reminder of what he allowed his body to go through. And then we ask you to get your cup. Think about the power of this blood. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows. It's a powerful song. It's a powerful memory that God thought enough of us to bleed and die for your sins and mine. Let's drink from this cup as a reminder of that power he's placed in our lives. Let us pray. God, thank you for the reminder of a matchless love that goes beyond our comprehension. You loved us so much, you thought we were worth dying for. 
God, the least we could do is live for you. Bless this communion, bless this house, bless these your people. We ask your son's name, amen and amen and amen. We ready ourselves for offering time here at the New Salem Church. Again, we want to thank our virtual audience for your support and your stewardship and your generosity. There are five ways that you can give. First, you can visit the church. Uh, you can visit us at church.newsalemcares backslash give. Secondly, you can use the Shelby Next app. Thirdly, our cash app, dollar sign NS Cares. The fourth thing you can do is text your amount to 614-333-0656. And the fifth thing you can do is stop by the church, drop off your gift to New Salem Baptist Church, and we'll be more than glad to receive it and take care of it. Thank you for all your support and what you've been doing and your generosity and your stewardship. We'll encourage you to stay tuned to our top five announcements so that you can find out what's going on in New Salem this week and coming weeks as we get prepared to start the new year and the new quarter. There's some exciting things that's going to happen. And please stay tuned for the top five announcements. Greetings, New Salem family and all our special guests. These are your top five announcements for this week. Number one, remember to stay with us after service today for New Salem's first virtual baby dedication. Let us welcome our new babies into the New Salem Church family. Number two, in 2018, black youth accounted for 56% of incarcerated youth in Ohio, despite representing only 16% of people younger than 18. What does God's word say about this? New Salem's Life Development Youth Ministry announces a special New Salem Institute course for high school students that speaks to black youth and mass incarceration. Just us, God's voice and mass incarceration of black youth. Please email Minister Ani Mwalimu at omwalimu at newsalemcares.com to enroll. Remember, class starts February 7th and runs through the end of March. You can join at any point of this NSI course. Number three, young adults, you are invited to paint, worship, and fellowship together from your homes as part of a virtual paint party with New Salem's own Demond Hale. The Young Adult Paint and Ship Party will take place on Saturday, February 20th at 2 p.m. With registration, you will receive a supply list to purchase everything you'll need for the event, as well as the Zoom link. There are limited spots, so go to the church website to sign up or contact Dr. Chris Travers at ctravers at newsalemcares.com. Number four, put on your hat and gloves, take hold of the dog's leash, and walk it out with the Health and Wellness Ministry in a seven-day walk competition. The Walk It Out initiative will take place February 21st through the 28th. We are asking all participants to walk anywhere and anytime and record each step to improve your health and win the big trophy. For more information, email Lucretia Long at llhealthconnections at gmail.com. And number five, tune in to Wellness Wednesday on Facebook Live and YouTube Live at 5 p.m. This week's special guest is Dr. Dana Moulton, who will discuss matters surrounding women's health. All of these announcements can be found on church.newsalemcares.org or in the link below. Please follow us on social media for updates and information throughout the week. These are your top five announcements. Have a wonderful week. Good morning, New Salem, and welcome to our first virtual baby dedication. My name is Carla Coleman, Director of Communications for New Salem. Although our lives have changed a lot over the past year with this ongoing pandemic, this service is a testament that God's work and blessings continue on. I am excited to announce that today we have 10 families with new babies here for dedication. So without further delay, I will now turn this over to our pastor and shepherd, Reverend Dr. Keith Troy. 
Good morning. I'm joined here with my wife, Minister Brenda Troy. We are excited to be participating in this historic event, the virtual baby dedications of the New Salem Baptist Church family. We dedicate babies as a reminder that children are a gift from God and that God trusts us with the, another life. And so we are hoping that these parents and the family will provide a Christian environment for these children to be raised in with the support, not only their biological family, but their spiritual family. At this juncture, after the dedication, we assume that spiritual responsibility and we assume that spiritual support. So we're excited today to be able to dedicate these 10 babies. And at the end, my wife, Minister Brenda Troy, will do the closing prayer. God bless you and God keep you and may you go in God's peace. Our first family is the Adams family with baby Timothy Eugene Adams III with, and parents Landon and Khadijah. All right, good evening, the Adams family. I'm glad to see mom, dad, and the two older sisters. Everybody doing all right this evening? We all doing okay? Well, we've come tonight for a special occasion, and I need you to know that this is the first time we've done baby dedications this way. So you guys are making history in the New Salem Baptist Church family. We're excited for you, and we're happy that this baby can become a part of the New Salem family. So tonight we come to dedicate Timothy Eugene Adams III. He, even, he had, had never enough to look up because he recognized his name. And we're glad to have his two older sisters and mom and dad. You guys have been with us a long time. And we're excited that this is now the third child that we've been able to dedicate in this family. As you both know, babies are a gift from God. It's a reminder that God believes in us and he trusts us with the most precious gift. That's the gift of life. When we think about what it takes to get a baby here, we know it's a walking miracle and a living miracle. We also understand that it's just not a gift to the parents, but it's a gift to the family, the extended family, and the church family. It always amazes me what God does. He trusts us with raising another life. With all of our faults, flaws, and failures, God still trusts us. There's going to be some tough nights, some interesting days, all those kinds of things. But the New Salem family wants you to know you're not going to walk in this alone. So we come at this moment to give this child back to God. Yes, he has your name, but he belongs to God. And ultimately, we'll have to give account for how we prepared his walk with God and his meeting of God. So we're excited tonight. And so Landon, I'm gonna ask that you would hold him like I would normally hold him if we were not in virtual land. And we're going to dedicate this young man. We come tonight to dedicate Timothy Eugene Adams III, to give him back to the God who gave him to us. We're excited that God trusts us enough to send this son after these two sisters to be able to be a part of the Adams family. We're grateful for the gift. We're grateful for the love. So we dedicate him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we say, Amen. 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 Now, you guys should have received a gift from us, a certificate and a Bible, as a reminder that on this day, this child was given back to the Lord. And also, as you're raising him up and teaching him all those things, that you would also teach him God's word, the importance of that word in his life and in his living. And we ask that God will bless you and keep you and go in God's peace. Amen. 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 Next we have the Bentley family with baby Naomi Ray Bentley, parents Jonathan and Selena. Well, good morning. How are the two of you? We are grateful <laughs> to have this great gift from God who's not happy about whatever that is you just put in her hand. We're grateful <laughs> for a reminder that this child is a gift from God. It's a reminder that God believes in us and trusts us and gives us the gift of life. It's an amazing thing to, to come to the point to understand that in spite of all of our faults, faults, and failures, 
God still trusts us with a life. Now, there are going to be good days and bad days. I just want to remind you, the bad days have to do with your DNA, not hers, in terms of those <laughs> things. But God is going to bless you tremendously through this baby and through this child. And so we come as a church family to offer our support, our encouragement to help you along this way. We don't expect them to be still. We're grateful when they're moving and making noise. That knows all things are well in terms of that. As, new, as parents, we want you to know you have our support. Anything we can do as a church family, we stand ready and willing to do that. So I'm asking you now to hold her up so we can see her real good. And we're going to do the dedication. We dedicate, we dedicate Naomi in the, remain, in the reminder of the fact that she's a gift from God. We dedicate her in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. Our prayer is that God will do great things in her, with her, and through her. And she'll be a blessing not only to your family, to our family and the world. Amen. And thank you for sharing this moment with us. Amen. I'm Amen. grateful to have Mrs. Troy along with me as she helps us do this. And Naomi, when you get older, there are things I'm going to share with you about your mom, especially, that we know. <laughs> That's going to be our right now. All right? God bless you guys. God bless you. Have a great day. We have the Berry family. The Berry family with baby Brooklyn, Tegan, Berry, parents Gary and Ashley. Well, good morning. Brooklyn, you have no idea how long we've been waiting to get a look at you. We are glad that you are doing well and doing a great job of taking care of your parents. Today, we have come to dedicate you and give you back to God. It's a reminder that God trusts us with the most precious gift, and that's the gift of life. When you think about how much he trusts us, it's an amazing thing to know, in spite of our weaknesses, our faults and flaws and failures, God still believes enough in us to give us a child to look after, who eventually will end up looking after us. So we come today to give her back. She's born into a marvelous family, both biological and spiritual family, a lot of friends and cousins, all those people gonna look after her. So we come in this moment to give her back to God. Gary, if you'll hold her up so we can get a good look uh, at her in terms of those kind of things. We come at this morning, at this moment to give, me, give Brooklyn, Tegan, Barry back to God. She's a gift from God. So we dedicate her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. Amen, look at those legs. Yeah, amen. we can. So it's a reminder again that God trusts us and believes in us. You have support of your church family as well as your biological family and know we stand ready and willing to do whatever it is we can. She's going to be a runner. I can already tell that in terms of those kind of things. You should have received a gift from your church family as a reminder this day, as well as God's word. So while you're raising her, it's important to make sure she's rooted and grounded in that word. God bless you and God keep you and may you go in God's peace. Amen. Amen. Our next family is the Carter family with baby Lashad Cross Carter, parents Lashad and Cherie. Good morning, brother and sister Carter and big sister. We are glad to see you and excited and happy that we're going to get a chance to dedicate this baby today. It's a reminder that God trusts us and gives us the most precious gift of life. It's an amazing thought that in spite of our faults and flaws and failures, God gives us a life for us to take care of who in turn will end up taking care of us. I want you to know you have support not only your biological family, but your spiritual family as well. We're excited. Obviously, he's excited in terms of those kind of things. So we're grateful today to be able to dedicate this baby back to the Lord. If just leave him right there. That's a great, that's a great picture right there. We dedicate him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is our prayer that God's going to do great things with him, in him, and through him. Amen. Amen. You should Amen. have gotten two gifts from us, a certificate and God's word. It's our prayer that you will use God's word as a guiding point to raise this young man to be an outstanding young man. So God bless you and go in God's peace. Amen. 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 
Our next family is the Chekwa family with baby Elijah, Cole Chekwa, with loving parents Zia and Chimdi. All right, good morning. We are grateful to be able to be a part of the dedication of this family today. We are excited that God has sent that gift to you and to be a part with his sister. And so we're excited today because we realize that children are a gift from God and they're reminded that God believes in us and trusts us. So we're going to come at this moment and pray this prayer of dedication for Elisha Cole Chikwa. All right. God bless him in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Our prayers that you'll do great things with him, in him, and through him, and that God, he will be surrounded by a loving biological family and spiritual family. Amen. Amen. Now, you guys should have gotten two gifts from us, that being the certificate with this date dedication and also a Bible in God's word that he will lean and trust as you walk with him and teach him in God's word. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Next, we have the Clementson family with baby Jasper Abeo Ash Clementson, parents Alexander and Allison. All right, we come this morning to dedicate this baby, to give this baby back to God because he is a gift from God, and we're grateful for that gift. Children are reminded that God believes in us mm -hmm. and trusts us. And not only trusts us, but God participates in the raising of the child. So it's a reminder that you not only have a biological family, but you have a spiritual family as well. And so we come this morning to dedicate this child in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, Jasper, Abayo, Ash, Clemenson. We are excited what God's going to do in him, through him, and with him, and ready and prepared to provide that spiritual environment for God to do great things. God bless you and God keep you. You should have received two gifts from us, a certificate certifying today the child was dedicated, and also the Lord's word that we're going to help you root and ground this baby, and we know that you will as he grows to be what God would have him to be. God bless you and God keep you. May you go in his peace. Amen. 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 <laughs> Our next family is the Ford family with baby Kayla, Janine, Yvette, Ford, parents Ulysses, and Elise. Well, good morning to the Ford family. We have been looking forward to this day for quite some time. We are excited that we're able to be a part of giving this baby back to the Lord. I've known this family for a little while, and it's exciting for me to be able to be a part of this. So we come today to be able to dedicate this baby. And so we dedicate this baby in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Her name being Kayla, Janine, Yvette Ford. We're grateful to see Auntie and Grandma there as well. We dedicate her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our prayer is that God's going to do great things with her, in her, and through her. Amen. Amen. You should Amen. have received a, gift from us, a certificate and a Bible, and we hope that you're going to use that Bible as a foundation to raise this baby. Also, when she gets older, I'm going to spend time with her, sharing with her all about her father and everything that I know. Amen. <laughs> God bless y'all and God keep y'all. Have a great day. Amen. Our next family is the Gunn family with baby Jesse Leonard Gunn the fourth, parents Jesse and Dominique. Well, good morning to the Gunn family. We're happy to have this opportunity to participate in this virtual baby dedication. We come today, I'm not upset at you at all, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. We come today to give you back to God. We're grateful that God has sent you our way and the fact that he trusts us with the most precious gift. That's the gift of life. We want to remind you that children are a gift from God. And even though the baby bears your name, ultimately we'll have to give accountability and responsibility back to the God who gave him to us. So we come this morning to dedicate him. Now, if you'll lift him up just a little bit more so we can get a full picture of that handsome face. So we come today to dedicate him, his name being Jesse Leonard Gunn the fourth 
We dedicate you in the name of the Father, mm -hmm. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our prayer is God's going to do great things with you and through you and to you. Amen. Amen. We're Amen. excited that one day we won't have to do this virtually and pastor's going to be able to hold you and help you and have a good time with you. God bless you. May you go in God's peace. You should have also gotten two gifts from us, a certificate to verifying this day and also God's word. Our prayer is that you'll use that Bible as a foundation for his growth and development. May you go in God's peace. Amen. 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 Our next family is the Hayes family. With baby Hubert Dorn Hayes III, loving parents Hubert Hayes, and Georgina Beckman. All right, we come this morning to dedicate this baby. We're excited that children are a gift from God. He's a reminder that God trusts us and believes in us. Most precious gift. And so it's a reminder also that in spite of our faults, flaws, and failures, God still believes in us enough to be partners with him in raising his children. He bears your name, but ultimately we're going to have to give accountability back to God for the gift he has given you. So we want to dedicate this baby at this time. We're going to dedicate Hubert Dorn Hayes III in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. It's our prayer that God's going to do great things in him, with him, and through him. Amen. Amen. You should Amen. have gotten two gifts from us, a certificate and a Bible. And God's going to share with you through that word as you provide a firm foundation for his growth and development. As he grows, we're going to be prayerful and provide support. God bless you and God keep you and may you go in his peace. Amen. Amen. Next is the Johnson family with baby Kyler Jacoby Johnson. Parents Eric Johnson and Kamara Morgan. Good morning. We come grateful for this opportunity to be able to dedicate this baby. The dedication serves as a reminder that children are a gift from God. They're a reminder that God trusts us. And even in spite of our faults and flaws and failures, God trusts us enough to raise a child in his image with his energy. We know that the two of you are surrounded by a biological family, but the New Salem family also offers you a spiritual family, provide an environment for this child to grow into what God would have the child to be. We're excited for this baby and all that the baby's going to do and become. We want to remind you that ultimately, accountability to God for this baby is what's gonna be charged. So we come this morning to dedicate this baby in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. The baby's name is Kyla Jacoby Johnson. We are excited for what God's going to do in him, through him, and with him. God bless you and God keep you and may go in God's peace. You should have received two gifts from us, one being a certificate that certifies that this is the day that he was dedicated, and then God's word. And our prayer is that you would use God's word as a development tool in this child's growth and upbringing. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you today, O oh God. It's a special day. Father, we thank you that even in this trying times, we still were able to give the blessings of children back to you. We thank you, O oh God, for these 10 families. We thank you for these 10 beautiful babies, O oh God. This says that New Salem has a future. So God, we ask that you continue to strengthen the parents to provide and protect them. We thank you, Lord, and we know that this day we will count it blessed because of what transpired here today. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. 